chamomile is a wonderful garden flower. It looks beautiful. It attracts and feeds beneficial insects, and it gives you the opportunity to enjoy a soothing, relaxing beverage. Join me today as I show you how I harvest my chamomile and then make chamomile tea. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and this is German chamomile. Last year, I got some chamomile seed, started it indoors, and then transplanted the young plants into the squares in this concrete block garden bed. I didn't harvest much last year. I just let it go to seed. As an annual, it reseeds pretty well. And as you can see, without adding any new seed or adding any new plants, this is what I got this year. I did the same thing in my front yard, using the chamomile as a landscape plant to start filling out this area. Again, I didn't put any of these plants in this year. They all came from the seed that was dropped from the flowers last year. And this can be an ideal landscape plant. I live in a very dry region, and so in this whole area, it doesn't get much more than the natural rainfall. I'll supplement the water occasionally, but the chamomile does great in some harsh environments like mine. So I've got it in the landscape and I've got it in the garden. Whether as a landscape flower or a garden flower, as soon as you see these beautiful yellow domes with the white petals around it, they're ready to harvest. And at that point, you can take them in and either use them fresh or dried to make your tea. And I'll show you how I do both of those methods. The flowers are perfect for harvesting when the petals are perpendicular to the stem, when they're sticking straight out from the plant. When they start to droop down a little bit, they're still okay, but they're past their peak flavor. If they age to the point where the petals have drooped completely down, it may not be worth harvesting. You can still do it, but you've lost most of the benefits. If you just want to make one or two cups of chamomile tea using fresh flowers, you can harvest at any time of day. It's wonderful in the early evening to come out, harvest a few tablespoons of flowers, and then go in and make a tea, as I'll show you in just a little bit. But if you want to dry the flowers so that you can have them for many months to come, I suggest doing a big harvest all at once, because when the flowers are ready, there's going to be hundreds of them ready if you have as many plants as I do. So I've got my big bowl, and I'm going to start harvesting. It's a good idea to wait until late morning to do this. If you do it in early morning and there's still dew on the flowers, it makes the drying process last longer. So I like to start with the flowers as dry as possible because they've been under the sun for a few hours. The flowers are very easy to harvest. You just grab the flower and pull it off. It's as simple as that. Now you can go through and do a bunch at once, fill up your hand, and then just drop the flowers into your bowl. You can also take some pruning shears and come in and just cut the flowers so that they drop into the bowl as well. I like getting in here and pulling them off individually. If there happen to be any small insects on the flowers, I think this helps knock them off a little bit better so I don't have to worry much about cleaning up these flowers when I take them inside to dry. Like many of the flowers that we grow in our gardens, when we remove the flowers, it often stimulates the plant to produce new flowers. So even though we're taking away an important seed source for spreading these flowers, we're getting an amazing amount of flowers to make our own tea. 
the plant will respond by sending out new flowers. You might be able to get a couple different harvests over the course of your season. Later in the season, I just let the flowers go. I don't do a late season harvest so that they'll seed and then repopulate the garden space for next year. The leaves and the stems are edible and you can include them in the tea, but they tend to have a more bitter flavor than the flowers themselves. So I'm focused on trying to harvest just the flower head to make my tea. If you like a bitter tea, then by all means, harvest some of the leaves or maybe more of the stem at this point. And that will definitely affect the flavor of your tea. I've done a pretty good job of harvesting most of the flowers on these plants, but I don't want to harvest everything. One of the reasons I grow this plant is because it is a food source for some of the insects in my garden. So while I have most of the flowers off of these plants, I'm going to leave quite a few behind. And some of the plants I probably won't harvest at all so that I ensure a good food source for those insects. So for now, I think I have a pretty good amount. Let's go inside and start the drying process. Drying these flowers is incredibly easy. I'm just going to air dry them and I can use a paper plate, parchment paper, a cloth napkin, a dishcloth, whatever you have to lay out these flowers on is probably going to be perfectly fine. Now, I know that these flowers are clean, meaning I don't use any chemicals in my garden. So there's been no herbicides, no pesticides, no chemicals sprayed anywhere near these flowers. So I can go ahead and start spreading them to allow them to dry. If you have a concern where maybe there were some chemical sprays in the area nearby, you might want to wash the flowers first. But do realize, kind of like the morning dew, if these are wet, they're going to take longer to dry. The process is pretty easy. We're going to put the flowers and spread them out on a paper plate or whatever you're using. We want to try to have as much air space around the individual flowers as possible. So avoid stacking. And when the plate is pretty full, we'll stop there. And then we'll do the same thing with the parchment paper or whatever else we're using. If you have a fine mesh screen that you can lay the flowers on, that's ideal because then you'll have airflow all around the flower. These are going to take about a week to dry. If you live in a more humid area, it might take longer than that. If you live in a very dry area, it might take less than that. And I'll come back in about a week and show you what to look for when the flowers have dried. Now you can do this in an electric dehydrator, but I think that air drying works a little bit better. The problem with the dehydrators is it needs to be on the lowest setting. And there are many dehydrators that just don't go low enough. You don't want to cook these flowers. You just want to dry the flowers. So if you're in a hurry, go ahead and use a dehydrator on the lowest setting. And you'll probably have completely dried flowers in about six to eight hours. By spreading them out, I'm allowing them to retain all of the goodness and none of it is going to be cooked out. Periodically over the course of the next week, I'll come and I'll shake the plate and I'll 
move the flowers around just so that the bottom side gets turned and will be exposed to the air. But that's really all the work that's involved. I just will have them set in an out of the way place, let them dry and then come back in a week and they'll be ready to use. Harvesting and drying the flowers is what you want to do when you want to store the flowers for a long period of time and enjoy tea for months to come. But you can come out at any time that the flowers are actively blooming and harvest to make a fresh tea. Now, one of the things you'll notice as the flowers are drying is a wonderful aroma that will arise from the flowers. It has a little tinge of sweetness, an apple to it. And so that's another reason why I like air drying the flowers because it just makes the room smell so wonderful for about the week that they're drying. It's probably not a surprise when you harvest the fresh flowers that the tea will actually have more of a sweet apple flavor to it. I don't think you get that same flavor with the dried flowers. And so a fresh cup of the chamomile tea is really a pretty incredible experience. Like most of the things we grow in our garden, it just tastes better when you harvest it and use it fresh. And the chamomile flowers really follow along that same trend. Now, it's going to take a few tablespoons of flowers to make a cup of tea. So just like before when we were harvesting for drying, I'll go ahead and pull off most of these flowers. What I don't use fresh now, I can go ahead and add to the ones that are drying. Fresh or dry, all of these flowers will turn into delicious tea. Making the tea is just as simple. I'll go ahead and put in three tablespoons of the fresh flowers. Now, it's about 15 or 16 flowers per tablespoon. It's about three grams of weight per tablespoon. I like three because I think that gives a nice flavor. Two tablespoons is a very light tea and four tablespoons will be a darker tea. I, I personally like three as the point that a single cup of tea tastes best. And then I'll pour in about eight ounces of boiling water. This is just cooled for about a minute. That's about 240 milliliters. I'll just give it a little shake and then I'll let it steep for about five minutes. After five minutes, it just smells so wonderful in here. That sweet apple fragrance is just so marvelous. Give it just a little bit of a stir. I'm using a French press, but you could easily do this in anything that allows you to strain out the flowers from the hot liquid. And then I'll just pour it into this mug. And it's going to be very light in color. The more flowers you use and the longer you let it steep, the darker the color will be. And now it's ready to taste. Oh, it's so nice. Just that nice floral, fresh flavor to it. And it's delicious. It's chamomile tea. It has a really vibrant taste to it. And I can see why this would just be so calming and relaxing. It really is a nice thing to enjoy. Let me show you how I do the same thing, but a little bit differently using the dried flowers. After about a week of drying, you can check to see if the flowers are dried enough to store. Just take one of the flowers, pinch it, 
and you should see it fall apart completely. Don't do this to all the flowers, this is just for a test, but now these are ready to put into storage. If you pulverize all the flowers, you're actually losing a lot of flavor. So keep the flowers whole until it comes time to make your tea. I like to use these clear storage containers and I'll just pour the flowers in. And this becomes very easy. And then because I've got the paper all ready to go, I'll just pour the flowers onto the paper. And continue filling the jar. And I like the glass because not only can I see what it is that I'm storing, but I also think this is nice and decorative. It's nice to see when you open the pantry. And I'll seal it to hold all that good flavor in. And now I'm ready to make some tea using the dried chamomile flowers. For this cup, I'll be using a tea ball, a little mesh infuser, and I'll put the dried flowers in. You'll typically use about half as much of the dried flowers when you use an infuser or tea ball like this. And the flowers are quite dry, so they weigh almost nothing. This is only going to be about a gram of the dried flowers. And I'll put the tea ball in the cup. I've reheated the water. And now I'll pour in about eight ounces and let it steep again for about five minutes. So let's test this tea. It has the same basic pale color, just slightly darker than the one before. The fragrance is still very nice. And it's still very good. The dried flowers, I think, have a slightly more bitter flavor to it. And it's not so noticeable to pick out that sweet apple flavor. But this is still a very nice tea. When I compare them side by side, I have to admit, I think, well, I know, I prefer the fresh flower tea. But the dried tea can be used for a long time to come. So this really is a great way to harvest some of the flowers and enjoy it either fresh or dried. Mm. This is so good. Few things are better than starting your day or ending your day in the garden with a delicious cup of chamomile tea, knowing that you grew the plants yourself and harvested the flowers yourself. And I like to add an extra taste component from time to time. I'll grab a mint leaf as I carry the flowers into the kitchen and steep the mint and the chamomile flowers together for a wonderful tasting tea. This is what gardening and life is all about. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.